Hey guys, and welcome to a new video in this computer vision tutorial. In this video here, we're going to deploy a neural network with OpenCV in C++. So in the previous video, we went over line by line how we can actually like load in a model, how we can deploy a neural network in OpenCV in Python. So we both went, we both used the GPU and also the CPU to do uh, a demonstration of the mobile net that we're running and doing some different kind of object detections on. So we're going to do the exact same thing in this video here, but I'm going to show you how we can actually like deploy that neural network in C++. But first of all, remember to join the Discord server. I'll link to it down in the description here. And you can join us, chat with us about computer vision, deep learning, artificial intelligence, and so on. You can now also become a member of the channel here if you want to support the channel more than you're currently doing by just watching with a small monthly fee and everything will go to create more and better quality content here on the channel. So thank you guys. So we're gonna jump straight into the code here. And in this video here, I've just written out, out all the code here. So I'm just going to go over line by line here, what the different kind of line does. If you want to know like how we can implement this here from scratch, I already created that video in Python and we're using some of the same functions. There's just some formalities between C++ and Python that we're going to use. But in this video here, we're just going to go over it line by line and talk about what it does. And then at the end of the video here, um, we're going to show uh, the actual example where we're running the optic detection with different kind of objects in the image frame. So first of all here, as in the last video, we're going to have this uh, optic detection class here where we have all of these different kind of like uh, classes from the Coco data set. So we can, for example, have person, a bicycle, car, motorcycle, and so on. So these are all the different kind of classes that we can detect in the image frame uh, when we are running it uh, later here uh, in this video. We're also going to have this SSD mobile net here, which is just actual neural network architecture that we're going to re read in. And then the frozen inference graph up here is actually like just weights of the neural network that we're going to use, which is the mobile version two, as we can see down here. So we have these, these three different kind of files uh, that we're going to load in. I'm going to show you how we can load it in with OpenCV and also how we can use them to actually like uh, pass an image through that neural network, generate an output. And then from that output, we can use boxes draw confidence score the different kind of classes that we're detecting around in image frame on the actual image frame at the end of the video here so first of all here we're just going into the main c++ file here we've set it up both for gpu support and we're also going to use the cpu so if you want to know how you can use OpenCV with gpu support make sure to check the videos out i have on this channel here where i go over how we can build uh build and install OpenCV from the source files with gpu support so we can actually like use a, a cuda gpu to do all the process uh, with our different kind of like computer vision technique and also operations. So first of all here, we're just having this main, uh, our main file here. We're going to include um, IO stream, F stream, because we're going to read in the classes. And then we're going to include OpenCV here as well. We're going to use the DNN module as we did in the last video as well. Then we're just going to use the name phase here. So we don't have to type CV or DNN when we're using the actual methods built into OpenCV. Then down here at the our main function we're just going to have a string here to the file path where i have actually like stored these different kind of files so this is just the path to the files that i have over here to the left in my directory then we're going to have a vector here that contains a string so we have a, a vector of strings and inside of this here we're just going to have all the class names that we're going to read in from the coco data set class file uh, that i just showed you over here so we just go up here again we can see that we're going to load all of these different kind of classes into this vector here of strings so we do that here by we're just opening up here and then we're just reading all the strings here into this file here that we actually like specified. So we're just going to open up this if stream here. So we then later on down in the while loop here, we can just go line by line. So we use this get line here and then we just get each of the individual lines in the text file. And then we're just going to push back that line or like that class to the class names vector up here. We're just going to print out or like see out the line as well. So we can also see down in the terminal or output each of the individual classes that we can detect when we're tracking objects around in the image frame. So now we can go down here and actually like read in the neural network. So to read in the neural network, as I sh showed you in the last video, we can actually just go in here and we can have this auto net here. So we'll just take the, uh, it'll just find like a data type here automatically for this neural network architecture. Then we're going to use this method here from the DNN module inside of OpenCV. So we have this read net here. We're going to specify uh, this is the file path here for the weights so here we have this frozen underscore appearance graph with the pb file extension here because we're using tensorflow and the file extension here is therefore stored for the weight files or like for a model in this pb file here then we also need to specify the architecture of the neural network that we're going to load in and then the last parameter here to the function 
or like the methods that it built into the DNN module is the TensorFlow here because we've used TensorFlow to actually like create this neural network here. So we're going to specify that to be able to read in the neural network here. So now we're actually like read in the neural network. We have all of the different kind of classes stored in our vector of strings. And we have our neural network here in this net variable. Then we're going to go down here and open up the actual webcam. So we're going to read in the images from the webcam. So we can then do detections on that later on. Here we see we are running, we can either run on the CPU or GPU. So if I just comment these lines of code here in as, again, we can set that we can see that we can set net .set preferable backend. So we can actually like set the backend here to use CUDA. So we like to like run our, our neural network on the GPU instead of the CPU. And we're going to test this here later on to actually like see how much improvement we get when using the GPU over the CPU. Down here, we can set a minimum confidence score for our detections. So if our detections or like our neural network is, is, is more certain than some threshold, then we would like to actually like say that that is a prediction and we're going to draw the boundary box around those objects that has um, a confidence score higher than this threshold here. So now we can go, to, go down to the actual like while loop here where we're just going to run this while loop here as long as our webcam is opened or we're not hitting Q on a keyboard because then our uh, program will terminate and we will close down the webcam again. So here we're just going to have this uh, matte uh, optic here or like this matte optic here that we're going to have the image here. So we are actually like going to read in the image into this uh, matte here, which is just like a matrix here in OpenCV. Then we have the, then we have the Boolean is success here. And then we're going to have that equal to cap the read. So we're reading in the actual image from our capture here, where our capture in this video here is our webcam. And if we can successfully load in our image, we will just have this Boolean here equal to true. So down, down here, we can actually check if this variable here is equal to true or false. And if it's equal to false, we will just see out that we could not load an image and we should try to like open up it again or like try to fix our webcam and, and stuff like that. But if we can load in the image, we will just go through, uh, through this if, if statement here. We go down here and we set the image height equal to the image.calls and also the image width equal to the image.rows. So we actually have this image height and the image width here that we're going to use later on. Now we're going to start this tick counter here. So we can click uh, to time how long it takes to do this forward pass here in the neural network uh, with our image to actually like uh, see how fast is the performance when we're running on a TPU compared to a CPU. And we can see how many FPS do we actually like get with our camera running this neural network here doing optic detection. So now we're going to get a blob from the image here because we're going to like create this blob from the image here that we're going to pass through the neural network later on. So in the platform the image here, we're just going to pass in the image. We're going to pass like a parameter here uh, and also the size of our image. Then we have a scalar here, which is the mean values that we're going to subtract from the, from like the image or like pixel values in the image when we're creating this blob, uh, blob from the image here, we have loaded in from the webcam. And then we just have some uh, standard parameters or like default parameters here, which is set to true and false. And you should just do the same here when you're going to read in like, uh, or like create this blob here from the image. Then down here, we can set the input here to the actual network. And we're just going to set this blob here as the input before we're doing the, the forward pass. So this blob here that we just created up, up here, we're going to set that as an input. And then we're gonna go down and actually like do the forward pass with our neural network. And we have created this blob here as the input. So we can see that when we're running this forward pass here of our neural network, where we're actually like passing our blob of image through the neural network, we will get this output variable here which will contain all the detections, all the information about the boundary boxes, the confidence scores, and so on. Everything will be stored in this output uh, variable here that we can then use later on to actually like do uh, the different kind of uh, operations on our image, draw the boundary box, confidence score, class names, and so on. Then we're just going to end the timer here. So this is, so we're just going to time how long it actually takes to do this forward pass and create this blob, a blob from the image here. Uh, so we can get the number of frames per seconds that we get. So now we're going to go down here and actually like use the detections that we got from our uh, passing neural network up above. So, so in this function here, like in this line of code here, we can actually just take the results here and the results will be the output of size. And then we take the second element here. We take the third element. We specify like the data structure here. So we're using a 32 uh, floating point and here the output here. So he, th these are just the values for our confidence score, our class ID, uh, class ID here, confidence score, and then the boundary boxes that we're going to draw later on. So now we've had all of our detection stored in this result variable here that we got from this output variable up here from our neural network. So now we can actually just run through all of the predictions or all the detections 
image frame. We're just going to have the for loop here running from i equals zero to all to like the whole row, all the rows in the results that we have. So all the detections that we have in our image frame. We're going to have a class ID here, which is just that equal to the integer values at this matrix here, at this position here in the results matrix. So we have to actually like the class ID of that detection that we're doing. So let's say we're detecting a person in the image frame. Then it will actually like this result here will store the class ID of a person. Then we can also get the confidence score here, which will just go use a floating point value. And it will be at this position here in the results matrix here. So we can actually like just get the confidence score directly from the results matrix. So now we can go down and check if the detection is over the minimum threshold that we set up in the top of the program. And then we can draw the boundary box if that detection is, is higher than the confident minimum confidence score that we set. So we're just going to have an if statement here checking if the confidence is higher than the minimum confidence score. And if it's over that, we say that this is a valid detection. And then we're going to draw the boundary box around that object. It could either be a person, a uh, chair, TV, and so on. So here we're just going, going to get the coordinates for the X for the boundary box for X value. So it will be the top left corner of our boundary box where we have this coordinate here and also the Y value for that corner. And then we're going to take the width and also the height of that boundary box. So we're going to take the top left corner and then we're both going to take the width and also the height. So we can actually like draw the whole boundary box around that object. So now we both have the, the coordinates here for the, for, the, for the corner point and also the width and height of our boundary box. Then we can use the build-in method here from OMSV to just draw an rectangle uh, at these coordinates here in our image frame. So we're just going to specify the image here where we want to draw the actual like boundary box. Then we're going to draw the, the top left corner and also the right left corner or like the whole boundary box here. Then we're going to set, set the color here as well and also the thickness here of our boundary box that we're going to draw around uh, the object that we're detecting in the image frame. So now we have actually like drawn the boundary box with the different kind of coordinates that we got up here. Then we can actually like have this string here uh, with the class name. We just set the class name here equal to this index here in the class names uh, that we got up from the top here. So we load it in all the classes into this vector here that contains strings of the classes. Then we're going to take the right index here that we're actually detecting. So we'll take the class ID and then we're going to have it stored in this, uh, in this uh, string class name variable. So now we can go down here and use this put text method here that is also built into OMS. We just need to specify the image where we actually want to put the text. And then we want to specify what do we actually want to, to display with the text here on the image frame. So we specify that we want to display it in the class name. And we also want to, to display the confidence score. Like, so how certain are we that this object here that we're tracking around? So we both get the boundary box around the object. We get the class name, like what, uh, what object are we actually detecting? And we will also display the confidence score. Like, so how certain are we that we're detecting this class? And then we're drawing around a bounding box around that um, as well. We go around with it, like creating bounding boxes uh, and scaling the thickness based on the confidence score and stuff like that. But in this example here, we're just going to, to display what is the actual confidence score uh, in percentage. Then we're going to specify where we want to, to draw it. So we're just going to draw it or like put that text right at top, uh, on top of the boundary box that we're drawing around the object. We're just going to uh, specify the font here and the thickness here and also the color here at the end. So these are just the standard parameters. You can play around with them if you want to have a thicker uh, like text or like lines and also other colors. Then we're going to down here and we are just going to have the total time which will be the end, end ticks minus the start ticks. And then we're going to divide that by the, the tick frequency that we use. So we're just going to use this here to actually like time our program or like again, as I said, how many FPS that we can we get by using this neural network here with both a TPU and a CPU. And then we're going to print out the total time here and to actually like get the number of frames per seconds that we're going to put on, put on the image frame. So we're going to display frames per second that we get on the image frame as well. We're just going to use this put text method again. We're going to specify the FPS and then the FPS will actually like be the integer value um, where we have one divided by the total time that it actually like took to run this algorithm here through. Then we're going to specify where we want to draw it and again the font and also just the color that we want to draw it in. So these are just the default parameters and as we just set up here with where we actually like wanted to draw or like put the class names and confidence score on top of the mounting box as well. So now we have actually set everything up here. We have both the boundary box, we have the class name, we have the confidence score, we are tracking around different kinds of objects, and we also have the number of frames per seconds. We can both use the GPU and the CPU, which we're going to do now here. But first of all, here we need to show here. So we actually like just going to show the image 
where we're detecting all of these different kind of things and also where we are drawing all these things here with the rectangle and we put text on top of that then down here we're just checking if we're hitting the queue on our keyboard then we will just go off the while loop we will terminate our program and before we're terminating our program we're releasing our capture so we're releasing our webcam and then we're destroying all the windows here from OpenCV and our program will then be terminated now we can actually run the program here and if we just go down here to the like the blue bar we need to make sure that we're in CMake release mode so I've created a video here about how we can actually like build OpenCV with GPU support as I already said but a common mistake is that we use CMake here in debug mode because we actually like built the source files from OpenCV in release mode so we need to specify the release mode down here we make sure that our Visual Studio Community 2019 is release mode as well then we can go down here and actually like build our files so we need to make list up here as well as i went over in the previous videos as well where you can go just go into that or go into my github just copy paste all of it here into the cmake list file here and then we can just run it configure it with cmake and build it with cmake and then run our program so down here we're just going to hit build it will build our program so we can actually get an executable file and now we have built uh, our build here has finished with exit code zero so we have actually successfully built our code now and then down here we can actually just hit this play button and it will run the actual program so down here in the output we can see that we get out these different kind of classes that we just read in from this classes coco text document here so these are all the objects that we can actually like track around in the image frame so now we can see up the image frame we're tracking around a person we're drawing this boundary box here around me we can get we, we can see we get like a 95 94 percent uh confidence or like probability that this is actually like a person that we're tracking around in image frame a really high number of frames per second we get up like to around 70 to 90 frames per second when i'm moving around here in the image frame we can see we are, we're drawing the boundary box here fine we're tracking the optic fine and um, we're, we're actually like putting this person text up here so this is a person that we're tracking and the confidence score so if i if i sample take out a cop here we can see that we're now detecting that this is a cop Sometimes it thinks that this is remote control, but we can see now it tracks it around like pretty clear. It thinks that this is a cop. It draws a boundary box around it, and it has like a uh, confidence that it is 97, 96% certain that this is actually like a cop that we're tracking around in the image frame. If I move away here, we can actually like see that it will also detect here at the, in the background. And even though it can still only see the half of my face, it still detects me as a person and if you can see like if i'm moving my arm here wider it will also extend the boundary box here around the person that we're tracking so there's a really nice and cool neural network here that we can run and we can see we get up to these like 70 to 90 90 uh, frames per second uh, when we're running here on the gpu so i'll just close the program here and we don't really need to like uh, display the time here in our output so if we just go up here and come these two lines up uh two lines out here so we're not going to run with CUDA as the backend, or we're not going to run the, uh, the target with CUDA as well. So now we're going to run with the CPU and see how many FPS do we get. So we need to go around and then build our program again. And when we have build our program, we can just run the executable file. So now we can see we get up here the image frame and we get around 30 FPS now. It is a bit more slow if I'm moving around here in the image frame. We can see it still detects the person, it still has the same confidence, but it's not as smooth and we don't get as many FPS. So if you're detecting multiple optics at the same time and we need to draw these different kind of optics in the image frame as well, we can see that it really takes up a lot of processing power and it's not really that efficient uh, and it doesn't have that good performance when we're running on a CPU compared to a GPU where we had up to like three times more frames per second. Uh, so it's really efficient to run our algorithms and our neural networks on a GPU when we're deploying it both uh, both on OpenCV or if you're deploying it with some of the different kind of frameworks. So thank you guys for watching this video here and remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video here. And also like this video if you like the content and you want more in the future. This will help me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. I'm currently also doing a, a deep learning tutorial where we're creating our neural network from scratch. We're talking about the basic stuff I like about the theory behind neural networks. We're training them on data sets and then we're actually like doing predictions on data that I hadn't seen before. So now, right now we're actually combining the neural networks, uh, neural networks and also computer vision together. And we can see that we can create these really nice and cool and efficient applications here where we're tracking around different kinds of optics and around an image frame. We can deploy our deep learning models with OpenCV, use all the different kind of like operations that we know from OpenCV and computer vision on our images. 
and then we can just display everything and we can see all these different kind of and, and nice uh, cool features so if you're interested in that tutorial i'll link to it up here or else i'll just see you in the next bye for now